Right, good afternoon everyone and uh, welcome to Institute of Southeast Asian Studies and um, welcome to this seminar presentation by Yedare from Apsara Authority in Cambodia and we really appreciate that you take your time to come and um, listen to what Darif has to say about the research that he's been doing over the last couple of years. Um, Darith comes to us from um, Apsara Authority and he's the um, Deputy Director of the Department of Conservation uh, of Monuments outside of uh, the Angkor Park area. And um, he is here as a visiting fellow, senior visiting fellow at the Nalanda Sri Vijaya um, Center. Darif received his BA from the Royal University of Fine Art in Phnom Penh and his MA and PhD from um, the Osaka Otani University in Japan. He has been consistently working on the archaeology and research of um, ceramics, uh, particularly Khmer ceramics um, in Angkor from about the 9th to the 15th centuries and has assisted in the excavation uh, of uh, a number of kiln sites, including one that um, our center's uh, archaeology unit had done uh, under the uh, project leadership of um, Dr. John Mixick, who's um, behind uh, there today. So um, NSC and the archaeology unit has had a lot of um, links with Apsara Authority and we are very, very happy to just have someone um, of um, Dari's cal calibre here uh, with us over the last couple of months uh, to work on a book project. Um, today, Dari's talk will be uh, entitled The Khmer Empire and Its Road Networks and he will be um, talking about some of the research that they have been working in collaboration with the Thais uh, on mapping the um, transportation land routes uh, out of the Khmer heartland into uh, its sort of um, greater sort of geographical reach. So I hand over this time to Darius. Thank you. Thirdly, thank you to Dr. Darius Heng for interviews. <clears throat> Today, talk, I will talk about two uh, main things. <clears throat> One is the Khmer Empire and then the second is the road network. First of all, I would like to show you all the <coughs> Cambodian history look at a glance. The, pre the history divided Cambodian history into prehistory, proto-history, or Funan period called by Chinese, and pre Angkor or Chen La called by Chinese, and Angkor period, middle period, and modern period. <coughs> For the prehistory, Cambodia has very long prehistory site, uh, have many prehistorical sites as you can see in the map. Mostly the prehistorical site located close to the river and in the mountain. So there are many excavation of prehistorical site in Cambodia as you can see in the picture. The north west of Cambodia called uh, uh, Pum Sinai and Kok Tri area in Bantia Minjai province, the uh, Iron Age site, as you can see. And then there are some sites in the uh, southeast of Cambodia, you can see uh, gold object and silver object excavated from the site. So after that, from the first of common our era, the Indian <coughs> spread the Hinduism and Buddhism to Southeast Asia. So Cambodia was one of the country that received the Indian influence. Not only Indian, but China also have contact with Cambodia from the middle third century. As you can see in this map, there are three kingdoms. So the Chinese record Cambodia from the first to approximately 6th century as Funan period. Funan was the Chinese name of an ancient kingdom located around Mekong Delta, southern Cambodia and Vietnam, present day. Funan was found in Chinese historical text describing a kingdom that are likely based on the report of two Chinese diplomats representing 
the Wu Kingdom who came to Funan in the mid third century. At that time, Funan, uh, at the time, uh, Okai was the international ancient national port of Funan. So, <clears throat> as a result of contact with uh, Indian, uh, there are they introduce the Buddhism and Hinduism, as you can see in this picture, the Buddha and uh, Vishnu, and the temple was built according to the Indian style at the first time. So this is the Indian introduction to Cambodia. And after that, from 6th to 8th century, the Chinese record Cambodia as Chen La. Chen La is a Chinese name for Cambodia after the fall of Funan. According to the Tang historical text, after 707, Chen La became divided into two rims, the land Chen La and water Chen La. Uh, land Chen La located in the highland area in uh, uh, what pool now is belong to Laos and the Chen La capital was probably somewhere around here and the some temple was constructed on the slope of the mountain and we can see some traces of ancient road that connected from Angkor to Chen La capital as you can see this from Angkor to Wat Phu. So this is how the temple in Wat Phu looked like. But actually, this temple was constructed during the Angkor period. The remains from the Chen La period, uh, there are still some, but I do not include it in this uh, slide. Very sorry. So, <clears throat> on the other hand, the water Chen La is located uh, here in Kampong Thom province in the middle of Cambodia. Now uh, the site called uh, Sambo Prekuk in Kampong Thom. There are some uh, brick temple and I think only one sandstone temple, but many brick temple. So now we pass to Angkor period from 9 to 15th century. Uh, at the end of 8th century, uh, Java invaded Water Chen La. And after that, Jayavarman II from 802 to 50, he marked the liberation of the Khmer people from the Java and begin a Khmer Empire. <clears throat> After that, Jayavarman II reunited the kingdom and the capital was moved to Mahendra Paravata, mean uh, Kulen Mountain, on, located on the north of Angkor region. On the top of Kulen Mountain, uh, he first uh, celebrate uh, Devaraja or God King in Hindu ritual ceremony. That is the first time that this ceremony took place. As you can see in this map, there are, <coughs> according to the inventory by the Ecole Francaise Extreme Orient and Ministry of Culture and Fine Art in Cambodia, they make an inventory of the site and found that about 1,000 temples and 4,000 archaeological sites. Among them, there are 634 sites located in Siem Reap province. So this is the, the site in Siem Reap look like. Mostly the archaeological site located between uh, Phnom Kulen on the north and the Great Lake Tunlesa as you can see many sites. And those sites were built between 7th to 17th century. So I would like to explain about Angkor. What is Angkor? Angkor is 
derived from uh, Sanskrit Nagara, mean the capital city. The former name of Angkor was Yusato, Yusato Borei, Yusatarapura, the central power of Khmer Empire for 600 years from 9 to 15th century. So this is the first leader in Angkor, took in 2012 by a company. And then it shows there are many sites on Kulen Mountain. You can see this is the Dai. And there are a lot of killing there. This is the highest temple on Kulen called uh, Aram Rungchen. This temple probably the place where the King Jai Varman II perform a ritual ceremony called uh, Devaraja because this is the highest place in this area. And this is the uh, one TA site or a possible royal residence. So this site was excavated by after authority and ISIS uh, and uh, NSEAU from May July or May June 2014. So a few months we going to have another test pit there. So this is the excavation activity uh, between Abzara and uh, and uh, and I see, I see, and we found a very interesting structure about the Angkorian uh, royal resident. Normally, uh, there are different level. The le <coughs> the early period, the le the slope and the level was make our soil, compact soil with the stone foundation, but later period it all was made by stone. So this is uh, our team and uh, helper. So this is the site on Kulen, how it look like. <clears throat> I think the, the Khmer king in the ancient time uh, changed the water from that flow on Kulen Mountain from natural water to uh, secret water by curving many uh, linga and uni on the bottom of the river. So this river become a uh, uh, secret river like uh, comparing to India it's like a Ganga river because the water flow over many linga and god so it changed to the holy water. And beside of that, there are some uh, curving or natural rock. You can see uh, bar relief and uh, elephant and lion. It's very natural side and very secret side. Beside of that, there are also some uh, <coughs> uh, brick temple and uh, laterai basement. And also there are some uh, ceramic kiln, uh, stoneware. After staying on Kulen for a while, Kulen Mountain a while, the, the, the king moved from the top of mountain to the plain area about 40 kilometers south. This area was called Hari Haralaya. And the first uh, water reservoir was constructed and on the south there are some temples like a Prakko temple and Bakong. Actually there are two kinds of construction of temple. One temple like this construct on the plate area was dedicated to the king ancestor. And for the Thai of temple that constructed a, a pyramid shape or pyramid style, it used for the king himself or the state temple. This is the temple that construct for, for king after king died, he going to live there. 
So after that, the capital moved from here to uh, here, called uh, Yosau Tarapura. So <coughs> the first, uh, the second barai, bigger than before, was constructed about two, two by eight kilometers. This is the water reservoir, but it was dried up. And then another uh, pyramid shaped temple was constructed on the top of Bakang Mountain that located here. After that, the capital moved from Angkor area to Kake, about 100 meter northeast. Kake area, this is Kake area. The situation is different from Angkor, especially the the geography. It it declined from south to north, but Angkor from north to south. So that's why they construct a water reservoir here, and then the royal residence and other main temple construct here. Yeah, this water reservoir and main uh, royal residence or other main temple located here. And this is the largest and tallest pyramid structure in Cambodia. Uh, it, it is uh, 35 meter high with uh, 7 tire or 7 level. Yeah. After that, the capital moved from Kokke to Angkor area again. So the king built another temple in the middle of the water reservoir and then another temple outside of the water reservoir. This is for uh, dedication to the investor. This is for the king himself, these two temples. So this is Bonte Sri Temple. The important is not only the king or royalty had power and wealthy to construct the temple, but other also can construct. Like this temple was not constructed by a king. It was constructed by a guru of the king. So from that period, not only the royal palace area can do something, but other places also become wealthy. For example, from the, the 11th century, the Khmer community in the north become wealthy and powerful. They could also build temple, organize labor, etc. And occasionally, competition and conflict emerge. So this is the example of other Khmer temple in the north, Phnom Rung in Buridam province, close to the present border now. It's very beautiful temple. And Pimai temple, and Phnom Van Temple. On the other hand, in the capital also there are big structure constructed in 11th century too. This is the Bapuan Temple, and this is from the top of the temple. Moreover, uh, there are uh, 9, 10, and 11th century barai. This call Western barai by researcher. In Cambodia, we call uh, barai tatla because there are always water, very clear water inside this barai. So this is the in the middle of barai. There is a temple called Mebon. So this is the center of this barai from here, like this, 2.2 by 8 kilometer in element. Comparing to other, I think this is the largest water reservoir in that time. <coughs>